Welcome to another episode of India Defense News. Kajil War is a story of yet another war between India and Pakistan fought over Kashmir issue. In today's episode, we are going to discuss in detail, the fourth war fought between India and Pakistan at Kajil in year 1999. The Kajil War is a story of victory of Indian Army on one of the toughest battlefield in the world. India Defence News brings you the latest news in defence, Indian Armed Forces and Strategic Affairs. If you like this video, then please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Now, let's get started. Since independence in 1947 onwards, India and Pakistan have fought four wars over Kashmir. The Kajil War was the fourth war fought between India and Pakistan at Kajil in year 1999. Kajil is small border town, along the India-Pakistan border, in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, in India. The Kajil War was the fourth armed conflict fought between India and Pakistan over Kashmir. The Kajil War was started by Pakistan, when Pakistani soldiers crossed the prevailing line of control and intruded into the Indian territory. The line of control is a de facto boundary that divides the Indian and Pakistani controlled part of Kashmir, after the first Kashmir War between India and Pakistan in 1947. The Kajil War was planned and executed by Pakistan's Army Chief General Parvez Musharraf. In the past, Pakistan had attempted to capture the Kashmir territory by sending its regular army soldiers disguised as armed militants. The Kajil War started when Pakistan army soldiers, disguised as militants, intruded into the Indian territory in Kajil by crossing the line of control and occupied the Indian posts left vacant by the Indian army. The Kajil is a hilly terrain and the climatic conditions are extremely harsh with temperature dips below negative 20 degrees Celsius and therefore, it was a normal practice for both the armies to vacate the forward posts in harsh winters and then reoccupy these posts during summer. However, this time, the Pakistan army instead of going back, had waited for Indian army to vacate their posts and occupied these forward Indian posts without being noticed by the Indian side. This was an act of war were evicted and pushed back to the original line of control positions. The main cause of the Kajil War is Pakistan's obsession for the control and occupation of Kashmir against the wishes of Kashmiri people. Since independence in 1947, Pakistan has attacked India four times after the independence of the Kashmir issue and has lost all four wars with India. In order to understand the chain of events that led to the Kajil War, we need to look back in the history of Jammu and Kashmir and India necessary to put the things in the right perspective. The history of Kashmir can be traced back to 4000 years BC. Kashmir used to be a Hindu kingdom and various 21 dynasties of Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, have ruled over Kashmir from time to time. During the first millennium, the Kashmir used to be an important center of Hinduism. Later on, Buddhism also came to Kashmir. The Islamization of Kashmir started during 13th and 17th century with invasion Kashmir by Mughal invaders. The Mughal invaders captured Kashmir and the Mughal rule prevailed over Kashmir till 1751. After Mughal invaders, the Islamization of Kashmir continued during 1748 AD to 1819 AD with the invasion by Afghan invaders. The Afghan invader Ahmad Shah Abdali, from Afghanistan had invaded India, eight times between 1748 to 1767. During these invasions, the Afghan invader, Ahmad Shah Abdali defeated Mughals, Rajputs, Jaths, Marathas and Sikhs rulers. Ahmad Shah Abdali died in Kabul, Afghanistan in 1818. His sons fought wars with Sikhs rulers and lost Kashmir to Sikh rulers. Subsequently, the leader of Sikh Empire, Maharaja Ranjit Singh annexed Kashmir in 1846. However, his rule came to an end with the advent British East India Company in India. 
And this was the beginning of British rule over India. The British came to India as merchants, and soon became the rulers using superior military strength and with the help of their infamous, divide and rule policy. The British ruled over India for over two centuries. The British rule came to an end on the 15th of August 1947 after the prolonged freedom struggle. At the time of independence, the British partition India on religious line into two countries and majority Muslims separated from India to join Pakistan. Prior to 1947 before independence, Kashmir used to be a princely state landlocked between India and Pakistan. Pakistan wanted Kashmir to be a part of newly created Pakistan against the wishes of people of Kashmir. However, the Hindu Maharaja Hari Singh of Kashmir, supported by the Muslim community leader Shaikh Abdullah decided to accede Kashmir to India. Kashmir was finally acceded to India in 1947. Since then, Pakistan is wedging wars with India to forcibly capture Kashmir from India. Pakistan has so far fought four wars with India over the control of Kashmir, and lost all four wars with India. The intrusion into the Indian Territory and subsequent Kajil War, was yet another attempt by Pakistan to forcibly capture a part of Kashmir. The Kajil is located along the India-Pakistan borderline of controlling Kashmir. The line of control is a de facto boundary which bifurcates Indian and Pakistan-administered Kashmir. The Kajil is small town in the Kajil district of Ladakh region in the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. The Kajil is a strategically important location because the national highway NH1D which passes through Kajil town. The national highway NH1D connects two important Indian towns that is Srinagar and Ray in Kashmir. This is a very important road link for the Indian Army which is used by Indian Army to provide the logistical support to the Indian troops deployed in the Sishin area. The Sishin Glacier is another flashpoint area between India and Pakistan. The main objective of the Kajil War for Pakistan was to occupy the strategically important locations along the National Highway NH1D which connects the Srinagar to Leh. This NH1D road is the main supply line for the Indian soldiers, deployed in the Syakhan Glacier. The Syakhan area is the highest battlefield on the earth at an altitude of 6,000 meters where India and Pakistani soldiers are fighting for the control Sishin Glacier. The Indian Army controls the major part of Syakhan area. The Indian Army had launched Operation Midduk in 1984 and since then the Indian Army established its control over the Sishin area. The Pakistani plan was to disrupt the Indian Army movement along NH-1D road link which is the main supply route for the Indian forces deployed in the Sarkhan Glacier area. Once this crucial supply route is disrupted, then it would easier for Pakistan to force the Indian government to settle the Kashmir issue on terms favorable to Pakistan. In order to assess the extent of infiltration by Pakistani troops, the Indian Air Force used the Canberra High Altitude Reconnaissance Plane, which confirmed the Pakistani infiltration along 150 km mountain range from Dristabat alike and 20 km inside the Indian Territory from the LOC. The Pakistani troops had opened fire with anti-aircraft guns on this plane sent on reconnaissance operation. One such plane was hit but luckily escaped and managed to successfully land with vital information. The Indian government led by nationalist leader of BJP, Prime Minister Atul Bihari Vajpayee had travelled to Pakistan, just few months before, on a peace mission. The Pakistani intrusion, just after this visit came as an absolute shocker and the Indian government had not expected such response from Pakistan. But now, the Indian government had decided to launch a massive counter-offensive to evict the Pakistani intruders. The Indian Army had also sent a small units to verify the information about the extent of infiltration by the Pakistan.
The army unit had returned with vital information about the Pakistani activities and the details of the forward posts occupied by the Pakistani soldiers. One of such army unit led by Captain Rajanklia was ambushed by Pakistani soldiers and later on, Pakistan had returned their mutilated bodies. The crossing of line of control by Pakistani soldiers was a serious breach and clearly an act of war by Pakistan. In the meantime, the Indian Army had mobilized the army units and the plans were kept ready to launch a massive counter-attack to recapture these forward posts occupied by Pakistani soldiers. The Indian Army had quickly mobilized the formidable strength of 200,000 soldiers and backed by artillery regiments ready for action. In the month of May 1999, the Kajil War had just began. The Indian Army launched Operation IJ, which means victory. The main objective of Operation IJ was to free all the Indian posts occupied by Pakistani soldiers and to push back the Pakistani soldiers to the previous LOC position. The Kajil district topography is one of the most difficult and inhospitable hilly terrain for any combat operation. The Kajil terrain is full of steep mountain and the Pakistani soldiers had occupied some of the most strategically located mountain posts from where they could easily target NH-1D cutting off the Indian supply line. The Indian Army was about to fight the most difficult battle. For Indian Army, the most formidable challenge was to first climb to these mountain peaks under the most hostile conditions along with arms and then carry out the attack to recapture these posts. The Pakistani soldiers had occupied heavily fortified and well-entrenched positions on the strategically located mountain peaks, such Tiger Hill and Kalilong Hill. While climbing these mountain peaks, the Indian soldiers were continuously being fired upon by the Pakistani soldiers seating on the top of these mountain peaks. The Pakistani soldiers had a major positional advantage, being located on these mountain peaks. Whereas, the Indian soldiers had major disadvantage, as they had to first climb to these mountains by directly exposing to the Pakistani fire. And for this reason, the Indian Army initially suffered heavy casualties. The Indian Army soon realized that they are no longer fighting militants but they are fighting with Pakistani Army regular soldiers. Very well equipped including anti-aircraft weapons such as US made Stinger missiles. The Pakistani Army was providing artillery fire support to its soldiers, firing from behind the line of control on Indian positions. The Indian Army extensively used the heavy artillery, 155 meters m howitzer guns both as FH-77B, which played a crucial role in providing artillery cover fire to the Indian soldiers before climbing these mountain peaks. The Pakistani soldiers had managed to secure the positions on the most of the strategically located mountain peaks. The Indian Army suffered major casualties during initial phase of the operation. The Pakistani soldiers were hiding in a well-fortified bunkers and it was difficult to target these bunkers with the help of artillery fire. And therefore, the Indian Air Force was called into action. The Indian Air Force was assigned the task to take out these heavily fortified bunkers on the top of mountain peaks and the operation Saft Saga had just began. The Indian Air Force launched Operation Safad Saga. The primary objective for the Indian Air Force was to destroy these heavily fortified bunkers, cut off the Pakistani supply lines and to keep the Pakistani Air Force away from the combat zone. The first phase of the air operation started with the rocket attack by using helicopters. During the Kajil War, the Indian Air Force Mi-26 Hind helicopter gunship could not be used because these helicopters have not been designed for high-altitude attack operations. For high-altitude attack operations, the Indian Air Force needed a lightweight attack helicopter which can fly at high altitude up to 20,000 feet. And therefore, Indian Air Force attempted to use Mi-17 helicopters, which is essentially a transport helicopter. 
the Mi-17 helicopters were modified to carry rocket pods needed for the attack role. However, Mi-17 being a large sized transport chopper, lacked the agility required for high altitude attack roles. The Pakistani soldiers were equipped with US made shoulder fired Stinger missiles and Indian Air Force lost one such Mi-17 chopper during the attack operation. The Indian Air Force suffered some losses during the initial phase and Pakistani forces managed to shoot down one Mi-17, one MiG-21 and one MiG-27 fighter planes during attack operations. The Indian Air Force launched the second phase of attack using sophisticated Mirage 2000 recently acquired from France. The Mirage 2000 were equipped with Israeli laser designation pods and the laser guided bombs. With Mirage 2000 in action, the Indian Air Force delivered a devastating blow to the Pakistani positions and supply depot using laser guided bombs. The Israeli help also played a crucial role during the Kajil War. Israel had supplied precision shooting weapons such as laser designation pods, laser guided bombs and UAV for reconnaissance operations. India also deployed Russian origin MiG-29 air superiority fighters, equipped with BVR beyond visual range missiles to keep the Pakistani Air Force away from the combat zone. The Indian Army operation to recapture the Tiger Hill at an altitude of 5,307 meters was one of the most prestigious and significant victories for the Indian Army. And the Kajil War story will be incomplete without the mention of the battle for Tigra Hill. The Tigra Hill is one of the most prominent and strategically located mountain position, which was occupied by the Pakistani soldiers. The Tigra Hill is also referred to as Point 4660. The Tigra Hill operation was one of the toughest operation due to extremely difficult conditions and the Pakistani soldiers had taken well entrenched positions on the top of the Tigra Hill. This operation was a big challenge for Indian Army soldiers because they had to first climb these steep slopes without any cover and then carry out the assault. The Indian Army had assigned this difficult task to three battalions. These include 18 Grenadiers, Tunaga, and eight Sikh battalions were assigned the task to capture the point four six six zero situated on the top of Tiger Hill. The regiment of artillery will provide the initial fire cover with both as 155 mile meter howitzer guns. The 18 Grenadiers battalion further subdivided themselves into three assault teams Alpha, Charlie, and Gutak companies. The operation to capture Tiger Hill started on the 3rd of July 1999 and the operation lasted for 36 hours. The Indian Army soldiers captured the Tiger Hill point 4660 on the 4th of July 1999. In this operation, total 38 soldiers were martyred and Pakistan had suffered 92 soldiers were killed in this operation. The Indian Army official Yajendra Singh Dave who belongs to 18 Grenadiers was awarded Paramba Chakra for his exemplary courage and bravery. This is the highest military honor of the Indian Republic. Yajendra Dave continued assault on enemy despite being hit by 14 bullets and played a major role in the victory to capture of Tiger Hills. The Kajil War was planned and executed by Pakistani Army Chief General Parvez Musharraf. It is believed that the Pakistani political leadership was not even consulted by General Parvez Mushraf before starting the military operation of this scale against India. The Pakistani general had grossly underestimated the Indian reaction. When the Pakistani forces started suffering heavy casualties, the Pakistani political leadership led by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif rushed to US to seek US intervention. However, for the first time in the history of India-US relations, the US had refused to take a pro-Pakistan stand and rather supported the Indian point of view. The US President Bill Clinton refused to intervene till the time, the Pakistani forces are not called back unconditionally to the previous LOC position. The US administration refusal to provide honorable exit option to Pakistan. Further. The Indian Army had intensified its attack on Pakistani positions and Pakistan had already suffered unsustainable heavy casualties. 
After returning empty-handed from U.S. and mounting heavy casualties by Pakistan forced the political leadership to unconditionally withdraw its forces back to the previous line of control positions. After almost two months of intense military operation, India finally achieved its main objective of evicting the Pakistani soldiers who had infiltrated into the Indian territory. And therefore India won the Kajil War. The Pakistani side had suffered heavy casualties and humiliation and the Pakistani troops had to withdraw unconditionally back to the previous LOC positions. At the end of Kajil War, Pakistan had gained nothing, except huge losses and unsustainable casualties. It was clear that Pakistani generals had grossly underestimated the Indian reaction and the blame game started in Pakistan. Surprisingly, China took a neutral stand during Kajil War. Despite Pakistani Foreign Minister Sartaj Aziz Harid visit to China and China advised both the warring parties to reach to some amicable political settlement. Most countries supported the Indian stand in Pakistan was completely isolated being an aggressor and for crossing the line of control. The humiliating defeat in the Kajil War had its major political fallout in Pakistan. After the Kajil War defeat, the pressure started mounting on the Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to fix the accountability for the large number of causalities suffered by Pakistani army and the political humiliation. Suffered due to defeat in the Kajil War without any gain. The humiliating defeat suffered by Pakistan in the Kajil War also spoiled the relations between the Pakistani political leadership and the army. Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif was also very upset with General Parvez Mushraf for not consulting him before initiating war with India. The unrest between political leadership and army chief eventually led to yet another coup by the Pakistan army. In a swift action on October 12, 1999, the Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif dismissed the Pakistan Army Chief General Musharraf when he was out of the country on a visit to Sri Lanka. He was also denied entry into the Pakistan and the civilian government even tried to prevent his plane from landing at the Karachi airport. However, the Pakistan armed forces came to his rescue and took over the control of the airport and other government installations. In a military coup, General Musharraf dissolved the parliament and dismissed the political leadership led by Nawaz Sharif government. The Indian Prime Minister Atul Bihari Vajpayee came as victorious and he was rewarded by re-electing him once again as Prime Minister for his second term. However, the Kajil War also turned out to an eye-opener for the Indian government. The Kajil War exposed many critical gaps in India's strategic planning and military preparedness which includes the need for light attack helicopter for high altitude operations. The Indian Air Force is now equipped with light attack helicopters specifically designed for high altitude operations. The Indian government also felt the necessity for satellite to closely monitor boundary. India now has many sophisticated dedicated military satellites to closely monitor the Indian boundary. India has also initiated steps to acquire latest fighter aircraft Rafale from France. The Rafale acquisition will be a complete game changer for the Indian Air Force. The Indian Air Force has also initiated steps to upgrade existing fleet of aircraft. The Indian Air Force has also acquired C-17 Globemaster, heavy lift aircraft and the Chinook heavy lift chopper necessary for quick deployment of armed forces. The Kajil War formally ended on the 26th of July 1999. Since then, every year on the 26th of July, India celebrates Kajil Vijay Diwas. The Indian victory did not come easy as India had lost some of its brave and finest soldiers who had made a supreme sacrifice for India. The stories of these brave soldiers in the battle will inspire many generations of young soldiers. That brings us to the end of this episode on India-Pakistan Kajil War 1999. Thanks for watching, and India Defense News look forward to see you soon with another interesting topic.
If you have liked this video then please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel India Defense News. Thanks and Jai Hind.